Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another episode of Bayani Talk. Hey everybody, this is Guru Francis, Big Boy Screamador, and today's another episode of Bayani Talk, and today I'd like to talk to you about this incident that happened at a tournament. But before I do that, th for those who have been coming to our channels uh, as our big fans, our big supporters, we want to thank you for continuing to support this channel. And if this is your first time here, please look around, check out all the other videos. I think you'll enjoy them. And don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that notification button so you're alerted to the next time a video drops. So let's get right into this. So I want to show you guys this one clip first. But before I do that, please, viewers discretion is advised. Okay, so, okay, so, yes, uh, you know, that video is, is definitely very, very shocking to see. So, let's get right into this. So, there's, let me just give you guys a little bit of preface in uh, what happened in this video. So, the fighter in black is actually one of my students. Um, and so, for me to, to talk about this incident that happened um, almost, uh, almost three weeks ago, um, because, you know, it, it's, it, to me, it's very important. It's very shocking. Um, I had, basically I had skin in the game. It's one of my guys. Now, just to give you again some more preface or some more context, I actually wasn't there at that match. I was actually coaching another, another student at the same time. So I actually didn't know that this occurred until the following day when I was reviewing all of our films. And then it was when I saw this film, I mean, that, that, that portion of that film where it was very, very shocking to me. So, I didn't know this happened and um, none of my students who, I mean, none of my students told me and there were, m the majority of them were all there, but none of them told me that this happened and they let it continue. So a couple of things that I was, I was also told that that fighter, the one in the gray or light gray, if not white shirt, um, he was somebody who was uncontrollable or wouldn't stop when he was ordered to stop in the two previous matches and um, and he just he was just an uncontrolled fighter uh, and number two I don't know or the next thing is I don't know what school the, the that they're from um, I, I don't want to speculate so I'm not gonna guess but I think that's uh, you know that's really beside the point and lastly, I want to talk about, I don't know this referee. I don't think I've ever met him before, before that day. Um, and I don't know uh, what school he's from because as you noticed, he was wearing a generic graphic tee shirt. And so I don't know where he's from. I actually don't even really uh, remember his name and that's not to sound conceited. It's just that I'm really bad with remembering names. So let's just, let's just dig in into a couple things. So when my students was telling me that, you know, they don't blame the referee for doing that because the fighter was unruly in the two previous matches unable to stop I have a couple of issues with that right first issue if the fighter is something is, some, is someone that that cannot be controlled by the referee then the question is why did the referee continue to let this fighter continue to fight um, at a certain point if a fighter is unruly and is and is, and is um, not uh, listening to your orders disqualify them and by disqualifying them I'm assuming that in, in that tournament rule set that once they're disqualified, they're disqualified for the rest of the day, right? Or at least the very least for, to that division. But so, but apparently, they let, he the referee did not disqualify this fighter because they, according to a lot of sources, including some of them are my students, said that this person fought like was was uncontrollable in the two previous matches before that match itself. So the question in, in, with that same referee. So again, the question is why didn't the referee stop the match? I don't know. And but if that if that fighter was was uh, uncontrollable, then he should have stopped that match, right? The second thing that kind of concerns, that really concerns me, is that what is the role of a referee in a tournament? Now, from what I've always understood, and, and please, everybody watching this video, let me know if I'm off the mark. But from what I've always understood, a referee's job is only one thing, to keep the fighters safe, right? That's their primary job. That's their primary uh, goal. And as part of that is that they have to set rules and, you know, uh, and, and make sure that the, the fighters understand these rules. Uh, you know, you, you, we've seen videos where, where referees will go to the locker room and, and explain the rules to the fighters one more time. And then when they're about to, to start the match, referee says, I've explained to the rules to so you guys back in the locker room, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
but because the referee's job is to keep the fighter safe. I mean, I've seen countless videos online where we saw a fighter getting knocked out and of course the, and, and the other fighter still uh, wailing at the fighter that got knocked out. We've seen referees throw their bodies in between to protect the fighter that is unconscious because the fighter can no longer defend themselves and that's why it is crucial that the referee's main and only purpose is to um, keep the fighters safe but in this particular tournament the referee was also you know sc uh, tabulating scores um, uh, in each every one of the engagement the referee would ask the referees for their scores you know like uh, body uh, uh, legs body arms head and you know I think that that just adds another um, uh, responsibility to the referee who's got already a ton of responsibility to begin with by keeping the fighters safe so I think that if, if you know one of the issues that I that, that that concerns me is that the referee is doing too many things now, keep in mind, if it's just one match, you might be saying it's not really that, it's really not that much. But if you're a referee and a judge in, in a Filipino martial arts tournament, there's many, many times that you've been asked to referee and judge for hours on end. So if a, if a referee is getting too tired and is, is, uh, is losing focus, that could be very, very dangerous to the fighters. Again, the, in my opinion, the main responsibility of a referee is to keep the fighters safe. Um, thirdly, Fighters get unruly or they, they lose control because they're in a fight situation. This whole flight or fight mode is, is activated in that moment. Their adrenaline is up, they're 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 going they're getting frustrated or they're 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 going you know bananas on their opponent because they're in fight mode. That's why a referee is there because that the referee is the calm, cool, collected one, and the one that's supposed to, you know, be, uh, be the one that's level-headed throughout the whole fight because they don't have any skin in the game, right? They're the neutral party, so that they should be the ones that are keeping everybody safe. Everybody, um, they're the ones who are supposed to be keeping everybody uh, in line. And you know, when you're the referee. Um, you have to understand that when fighters are losing control, again, the question is why don't you at least warn them, deduct a point, or eventually disqualify them. I've been in many tournaments. I've been going to tournaments as far back as I can remember when I started my FMA career back in 1998. That I've been to many tournaments and I've hosted many tournaments and I'm hosting the upcoming Whack Whack Presents Battle of the Bayani that, um, that, the, that the referees are the ones who are supposed to be level-headed. They're the ones who are supposed to keep the fighters safe. So I don't understand why, um, you know, the, the referee um, did what he did. And, you know, and the, so, I mean, you know, I've seen referees kick out fighters right there and then. And, and because they're not, they're not paying attention, they're not listening to the rules. And if they, if they continue to do that, they're disqualified and, and banned from these tournaments in the future. So there's a lot of tools that a referee has to, make, to, keep, to maintain order and discipline within, within the ring, within the match. And lastly, um, there's a million, billion, trillion things that the referee could have done to stop that engagement. But to hit the person in the back of the head, which is a very, very dangerous spot, is to me, in my opinion, in, my, in, in, in the best opinion that I have, is completely, completely, completely irresponsible and extremely dangerous. We all know that the back of the head is way too sensitive for somebody to just be striking like that. I mean, he was holding a bunkau or a staff. He wasn't holding a padded stick. It was an uncovered bare bunkau stick that hit in the back of the head. And there's could be so many, I mean, there's a metal strip that kind of holds the, the, the head in place with the mask. And you could it could be argued that the referee aimed for that spot so he knew what he was doing. No, you can't really argue that because the problem is what it is, it, because it's only about one to two inches wide, what if he misses and hits the person directly in the back of their skull? And secondly, why I said that I had skin in the game, what if he hit my student? What if he hit my student? And thirdly, what if he hit the spectators? So I think that that was extremely irresponsible for, for the referee to do that. And I think that it was extremely dangerous for a referee to do that. The reason why the tournament directors gave him that bunk out, that staff, was that if he wanted to stop the match, he was supposed to put that in between them as a signal for them to stop. 
but not to use it to hit somebody in the back of the head. So there's a couple more things I want to talk about, but that's the first few things that I want to talk about in this first half of this video. And But I don't know, do you guys agree? Do you think that the role of the referee and, and the power of the, 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 the tools that the referee has and, the, and his reaction to, the, to, that, to that fighter and my and my my commentary do you guys agree with that comment down below but please stay tuned for part two and until then peace out god bless and keep swinging them sticks